All right, gang, it's episode 66. That's what I'm talking about. This one with Kyra Maestra. Maestra, fun to say. Uh, this is a little bit different, a little bit of uh, something new and exciting and fun for you guys. Um, Kyra is a friend of mine who used to, uh, met actually at Apex uh, Movement in Boulder when it was still in Boulder. And she's just been a friend of the community for a while. And she's uh, one of the people that was at the Mountain Mayhem Burning Man camp. And so we've had these intertwining of communities. And it's really cool to um, expand outside of it and share this little piece of that with you guys and basically you know we had this big thing happen in denver became the first city in the united states to decriminalize psilocybin mushrooms and kyra actually happens to be friends with a lot of the people that pushed that bill through and she knows some of the people and what they're doing and so there'll be some links to that in the description for you guys and then also she's a very talented musician and she's sharing um she did she performed a song with us that that was some hype you guys are about to hear it and then um also we discussed you know her work she actually works with psilocybin mushrooms and she does body work and helps people you know take um takes them through their their trauma or their their trip in a way that you know is healing and i'll let her explain it because i'm not so well versed on it and and i'm more becoming more well versed as you'll see in this episode um so i hope you guys really dig this one i hope that um if you're curious about this kind of stuff that we you know put enough of a disclaimer and caution around our statements. If not, like make sure that you understand that this is, you know, just a conversation between us. This is not, um, medical advice or anything like that. But, uh, if you are interested in, in some of the services that Kyra offers, then that will also be in the description for you guys. And, um, I do appreciate you guys listening. I think this is like a really important, fascinating new conversation that we all need to be having is discussing these, substances these medicines um and kyra is a really good um, person to have and talk about that with so i'm thankful for her to be on this podcast and share her insights with me and with you guys and without further ado here it is enjoy kyra maestra yeah. am yeah. i saying it correctly yeah, maestra maestra okay mm-hmm. it's Welcome like the feminine the of maestro so you could say maestra if you wanted maestra <laughs> maestra it sounds Spanish a little bit. Uh, yeah, it is actually Spanish. I didn't realize that when um, I gave myself that name. <laughs> <laughs> Are you part? Of, well, you kind of look like you have. Everybody has been telling me that since yeah. I changed my name to that. They're really? like, "Oh, so you're like, you know, from is South it? America or something?" Maybe you are. Mm-hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? That's where my soul was. <laughs> Your soul was from South America. Yeah. Mine too. At least in peace, and at least a part of it, piece of it. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. First of mm-hmm. all. This is going to be the first live performance of our introductory oh, song. That's so we're exciting. pretty exciting here. This is a new, we're breaking new ground as always here in the studio. And mm-hmm. we'll, get, we'll get into like your background and everything else a little bit after, I guess, this song. But yeah, so this is, I, you know, I guess the theme of the day that I'm, I'm deciding is the theme of the day is like bring, bringing in the new world, bringing in the new paradigm mm. and the different shifts that are happening in the world that are kind of like the, the symptoms of that. <clears throat> kind of mindset shift that's happening globally right now. Mm. Um, so this is a music project that is very much in line with that. Uh, cool. Yeah, that mission. All right, fire away, take yeah, it okay. out. I want to take that mic yes, from you. I'm gonna point this at the He's gonna point this at the guitar. Great. of obscurity yeah the world i see malicious and vicious traditions masquerade around as the right way to be it seems cultures got pull with the people they're in the shadows and it's building steeples so easy to fall into that hole if it's how we were born you say it's just the things that i have been taught it's just the way that i was brought up it's just the way that my people live No other way but to give in You've been speaking, told me like different is dangerous Like the world's got no space for us But our timing is perfect The new world is worth it We're waking up Who the hell am I to Say I am God That God is us And we are not lost 
hell am I to to be the whistleblower to stand for a different culture a culture of love a culture of love well who the hell am I to be allowed and to show up as I am determined to be dismantling the pain we bring the stories and service of our sufferings purpose and society I'll give you a key the answer is me look in the mirror we're the source of our own suffering you want the world to change then rearrange to be in line with the love you bring with your offering with the light you see set your own heart free oh who the hell are you to say you are God, that God is us, and we are not lost. Who the hell are you to, to be the whistleblower, to stand for a different culture, a culture of love? I'm giving up resistance, my heart is insistent, offer my soul to you in every instant, authentic calling to the one true mission, to love the world through my music and vision, I'm all in, ready to fall in line, with this love divine, and with this world of mine, together we'll rise and bring the shadows right, to a place of light, I offer my life, and I need you to live a life you love, and I need you to know that you're enough just as you are, and we are on the cusp of this new world, and in you I trust, every broken piece and place of shame, it's just a love showing you the way, so let the darkness teach you your own name, so in the shadows you can stand and say, tell you who I am, I, I am God. A culture of love. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Sorry, I gotta be the biggest. Woo! Man, that was amazing. <laughs> gonna give you that your mic awesome. back. Wow! Hey, thanks. Um, thanks for letting me play that. I just picked I, up the guitar when I got in here, and I was like, you know, I, I was like, play I'm this. gonna scatter some instruments around and just see what happens <laughs> because I know that <laughs> you're loud. such a talented musician, mm-hmm. and um, I know that's not even necessarily what we were here to talk. Let me make sure these levels are acceptable <laughs> before we get into it can you take that mic just as close as yeah you're yeah willing? yeah and um, that is kind of what we're here to talk about that like, is what we're talking that the big is what shifts, we're here to talk about you know um and then can you, is that is where you yeah, want to be yeah. okay cool i just want to make sure that it just all adjusting some levels so I just adjust some levels. <laughs> yeah okay i think we're good yeah i'm gonna take these off so i can <clears throat> not, not be the only one with my, yeah. headphones no yeah separation um <laughs> Yeah, I'm really glad you played that. That was a really, I mean, I feel it. I feel the song. I feel the message, I think. And yeah. So Maestro Music on Facebook is <clears throat> probably the best way to keep up with that stuff. But it's I just recorded an, an EP in Joshua Tree and all of these like kind of spirit songs and Nako-esque indie worship songs are Whoa. like kind of on their way Sweet. out. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is like, I mean, this is a huge shift. And like, this is going to be, I mean, this is why I'm so excited to open up the platform. Like, this is a shift in even, even what we're doing, you know, in some ways. Like, I'm trying to get more mm-hmm. people involved in, in what we're doing on this show. And even in like this opportunity, yeah. I was just kind of like, I don't know, just wishing, hoping. I was like, I hope that. I can talk to someone about like the legalization of mushrooms that just happened yeah. in Denver and then out of nowhere you hit me up and you're like, I want to talk about that with you on your <laughs> podcast. And I was like, well, I guess that sometimes you yeah. just get your, um, your hopes come true. Yeah. It's yeah. really amazing. So thank awesome. you for joining. Yeah, and, I just um, woke up and I, you know, I've been working on this project that's still aside been focused and I was coming out of this session in this new business and we like opened up our phones and realized that mushrooms have been decriminalized. And it was such a surprise because they were like 10,000 votes behind the mm. night before the yeah. announcement. Oh yeah. And, yeah, it, and it everybody like... thought that it wasn't going to pass. And so it was like super, super exciting to see that. And on the way back from Denver that morning, yeah, I just was like, who can I call? 
like I want to get this out there. I want to talk about what I'm doing and talk about like how exciting this is for our community, not mm -hmm. only just locally, but like across America, the different towns that are now going to model after what we did and start to try to legalize it or decriminalize yeah. it in their in their states. It's really exciting. It's super exciting. And before we dive into that, like I just want to get people just to get to know who you oh, are yeah. a little bit. That's a great so, place to start. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So obviously you you have a, a musicianship that you've been doing like tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your story and like what landed you on our couch today um well i was born one time um, <laughs> i like that <laughs> yeah early definitely beginning. started there yeah um yeah i i think that this past like four years has just been a really big intense like waking up process and mm -hmm. or five years i guess and just kind of born out of like a lot of pain and a lot of ego death and just kind of getting to a place where i'm rebirthing as a soul like and as a human and mm -hmm. i changed my name about three years ago and it just like it's been really really beautiful to be stepping into a new like paradigm like a new sh a new entirely new life wherein mm. I'm really just doing the things that I'm so passionate about and truly stepping into my gifts to help people and my highest excitement at any given moment mm -hmm. and yeah a lot of that includes music and really getting back into making the music that my heart really wants to make I've been a part of a lot of bands before but I've never actually tried to pursue getting my own stuff out there mm. and I'm kind of glad because this stuff that's coming through now is so different than what it would have been five years ago um you know sure and so part of that, part of what I'm doing now is starting to work with, you know, I've had a long history with psychedelics and done a lot of self work. They were a big part of my own healing journey. Yeah, can you talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit? I'm just curious, like what, yeah. what was like the cause of the, or if you're, if you're willing like yeah, to, to talk about like what, what, what put you in a place where you feel like you're right, you hadn't, you had this healing that you needed to do. Mm -hmm. And then how did the, the psychedelics come into play? So I started experimenting with psychedelics, like most of us do at mm -hmm. like festivals and, and you know, music, music events yeah, and things like I that. I think was the first time I took shrooms, yeah. like uh, not exactly the amount of intention that maybe I would advise now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we didn't <laughs> have a, a bad guide. experience, but you know, we were just yeah. like these rogue, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, people with these rogue drugs and yeah, chemicals yeah. and things <laughs> like that. Just kind of like figuring out, okay, well like we tried weed and the government was wrong about that. What else is the government wrong about? There you and go. what else are our exactly. parents wrong about? And mm -hmm. we just, you know, get this curiosity. And so we just like most people, I started doing it, you know, kind of frivolously mm -hmm. and stumbled across the healing powers of these plants and of these medicines and I really do call them medicines and some people are like oh I don't understand that until they start using them intentionally and they're like oh my god I get it oh, yeah. so, and it, I mean medicine like why does it have to even be like we throw that term around pretty loosely as is it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. aspirin's medicine and it can kill you like lots of things can like do damage <laughs> yeah you know what I mean so it doesn't imbue it with some kind of like magic in in a way that yeah. like but just by calling it medicine you know i i think it's like everything's medicine yeah you know what food I mean? can lot, be considered medicine yeah, exactly. because food can heal you of all sorts of different stuff yeah. you know so it's just like uh, yeah I, I mean i don't have any resistance to that word being yeah. thrown around because it's like we're throwing it around like it's hot potatoes right now anyways yeah in boulder <laughs> especially too oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow i'm just um uh, please continue yeah so um where was i uh just a five, you know, so I, I went through like a lot of different phases with my use of psychedelics and getting my heart broken when I was 21 and, and going and just kind of traveling, soul searching. And, and they always just kind of like superfluously like flowed with me through these different periods of my life. But about five years ago, I went through a pretty devastating heartbreak and I was really, it's just, it was mm. so much emotional pain and it was affecting me in a really physical way. Like, you know, lack of sleep and waking up every night, just like, so it's so distressed and like bawling my eyes out for like, mm hours every night it was like really intense my body was breaking out in these sores like when we come up against something in our lives that is traumatic for us I think that our we're just having this resistance to accepting this new reality and some people are faced with some really harsh realities you know people oh, yeah. go through some really intense traumas and and whatever that is like losing a child or losing a parent like this the, when life presents us with something that we just cannot get on board with sometimes mm -hmm. our bodies react a lot yeah and so during this period of time i was just searching for healing like a person with their head on fire looks for water like it was that <laughs> desperate you know yeah. i was just like whatever i have to do to figure out how to be okay again mm -hmm. and i was trying to get like back to where i was before but it you can't ever really go back and i didn't <laughs> even realize how beautiful going forward would be you know, oh, yeah. like having come to the other yeah, side yeah, and really feeling a... so like much like I've harnessed that healing and psychedelics were huge because I 
you know, this one time specifically, I'd like to, to mention, sure. I took um, LSD and it was the day before I was going to go and have a conversation with a, this person that caused a lot of this trauma or that I attributed the cause of this trauma mm. to. And I was really, really nervous about speaking with him. And I, I took this LSD and I went out behind this house that I was at into the woods. And I just, I was like, what? is the root of this abandonment trauma for me. Mm. Like, where did it start? Why does this hurt so much? And I like went out there with that question and I went on this couple hour long experience of just like gravitating between like stomping around and yelling and then like breaking <laughs> down and crying and like heaving like I was gonna throw up because just of the emotions that I was like willing to go through and sit with mm. in this experience. And then I eventually ended up in this meditation where I, I like went in a, to a very peaceful, quiet place inside of myself and I looked for the root of this abandonment. And I had this memory flashback from when I was really little in a crib mm. and I was freaking out and I remember the sheer terror and panic in my body and I, all that I could think was like, where are they, where are they, where are they? But I didn't even have the words for it. I was like so little. And I called my mom the next day and I asked her, I was like, was there any period of time when I was like a baby that you guys like maybe left me for <laughs> a period of time or something? And she was like, oh, <laughs> oh, like, you know, when you were about 18 months old, we went on this trip for like a week and a half. We had never left you alone f without us for more than a couple hours. And we left you in a place that you didn't know. You know, you were just so independent. Yeah. We didn't think it would be a big deal for you. Oh, and, shit. and they left me at a house with friends that I had never met. And oh, I yeah. like had a pretty traumatic experience as an 18 month old. And when my parents came back, I wouldn't even touch them or look oh, at them for like wow. a week. I was like, as a toddler, yeah. just like. Damn. Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> like, That's some weird wild shit, right? Yeah. That like even at 18 months, like there's like that there's like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're you're unable to understand what's happening, but there's like this, all right, you understand something happened mm -hmm. and you're like, nah, not I'm not engaging. And you can't in this. get on board with it. That's so in wild. your psyche. I couldn't accept that mm. reality. Yeah. And so it caused some trauma for me. And <laughs> it's so interesting to know that like part of the symptoms of like me having to deal with this like heartbreak was me waking mm. up every night panicking when that's exactly what happened in that memory. Oh, wow. And like I wouldn't have been able to go back into that memory if it hadn't been I really believe if it hadn't been for maybe like hypnosis or just LSD mm. because I'd learned to work with that medicine in an intentional way and it really just unlocked so much and helped me stop blaming this person so much, you know, for how mm -hmm. badly I was hurt. I was like, oh, okay, this hurt was kind of already mine. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's huge, yeah. right? It's like, I mean, it's, it, everyone has these, these traumas, I feel like, mm -hmm. right? More or less, like there's no way to grow up without mm -hmm. getting bent out of shape a little bit like yeah like to some degree to some degree right and so it, <laughs> yeah. this is super powerful and like i think that you know it's certainly been helpful for me to at least get new perspective on my life like and discover oh like the same exact kinds of things i might not have been even in a place where i was like my hair is on fire but i was <laughs> I was like, wow, I didn't think of it that way, even on, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not, I don't even want to really try to sell like the, the, the use of it or anything like that. Like my experiences, I think also are unique to me, you know, like yeah. they're not something that I could always, I could say like some people seem to have gathered the same wisdom without psychedelics mm -hmm. that I needed psychedelics to gather with. And yeah. that's like always a differentiation that I try to just kind of make because I don't really try to jump in someone's life and say oh there's something you should try unless mm -hmm. it seems to call to them because i'm like it called to me too and if you mm -hmm. feel like it's a good thing maybe go for it because it did help me but yeah. I, like I don't that know that i don't know that it's like, like necessary you know what i mean for yeah, some people yeah. i'm like oh you somehow have the wisdom already that i i needed help getting mm -hmm. um I like that undertone of trust yourself mm -hmm. you know like you were like it called to me so i trusted myself yeah yeah, yeah. And, and just out of curiosity, like, what is your experience with psychedelics? What would you say they've been the most useful in your life for? Um, let's see here. The most useful, again, just, like, reflecting back to me, like, what, what like, I needed to know maybe in that mm -hmm. moment which is sometimes like oh you're 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 okay you maybe have this huge resistance you're holding on your inability to surrender into certain things you're trying to control was mm -hmm. like a, a, a recent breakthrough i had was like realizing that i was just trying to like control things and i was like very resistant to just like this allowing of um 
peace in some ways mm -hmm. you know i just wouldn't allow myself peace because the work was never done maybe that was like part of my trauma it was like i never felt like oh i just could never do enough yeah and i was just like oh it's okay like you are enough you've always been enough that kind of like realization oh, wow so beautiful <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. juicy so um, yeah that's been and you know and sometimes it's been yeah it's it's always been it's been more helpful like now that i've like gathered an intention around it mm -hmm. beforehand it was easier to just kind of enjoy the experiences that i had on on psychedelics mm -hmm. um but if I had known like how to observe and like interact and engage with it the way I like would now, mm -hmm. I could have learned some stuff earlier, like not trying to use them so recreationally and to yeah. begin with. Um, you can truly just get so much out of it in terms of just like shifting your experience of the world or shifting your experience of your own mind or mm -hmm. like, so what really happens in the brain when you're taking psychedelics is we have all these ways that we interpret the world on every level, everything from like the textures that we see, we have these neural pathways that tell us, oh, that's what that's going to feel like. That's what that mm -hmm. sounds like. That's what, you know, that's what that is. And even these kind of more complex constructs in our thought patterns. And it's all mapped out in there as we, you know, reach adulthood. It's mm -hmm. uh, there's pathways that it likes to follow. And so when we take psychedelics, it opens up all of the other pathways and helps us to rewire things. And so that's why it can be so useful in the healing of trauma but there's a skill I think to learning how to work with the memories and learning how to work with the somatic experience of trauma or just beliefs in the mm -hmm. body you know because mm -hmm. our body is just so tied into what we think and feel so it's yeah it's beautiful <laughs> yeah no and I'm like I still feel like I'm scratching the surface on some of this stuff so I'm like really excited mm -hmm. to, to hear more about your experiences and like what you're the work you're doing and mm -hmm. and how it kind of like now integrates with this new policy in Denver and because I think that's like one of the things like like I just said like I could have used is like this more educational side of okay well what am I if I'm going to dive into this if it does call to me like what mm -hmm. what are the steps and like what are the things that we can share that would help yeah um, so this is really neat. I was just talking to a friend the other day. His name's David Champion, and he's part of like Unlimited Sciences. Um, they you can find him at unlimitedsciences.org. But you see, like now that mushrooms are kind of like gaining some popularity, and especially now that they've been decriminalized in Denver, there's going to be things like this popping up all over the place. Mm -hmm. And what Unlimited Sciences is doing is trying to figure out like what components go into making what types of experiences happen on psychedelics so what factors contribute to making a really good trip happen or a productive trip or a trip that's about healing mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to you know what factors promote violence and like maybe does alcohol have something to do with that or you know and they're just kind of gaining information and creating um, a series of metrics and questions to be asking people that are using psychedelics in their therapy practices or even just recreationally and eventually they're going to be kind of releasing these things for people to just fill out all over the place so you could actually probably be part of it if you go to their website mm -hmm. um, and just tell them about your experience and you know what was your diet like before then I think that their plan is to measure everything from like what was the moon phase during oh, this wow. time yeah, to getting, like what any... sound frequencies <laughs> but like you know made you feel what emotions and things like that like it's gonna get really heady and <laughs> yeah they're using a bunch of really cool technology um, to create and find patterns within the answers which is awesome that is awesome mm -hmm. um, what like, and, and we we're talking about like this shift in value in in, um, in culture can you talk about like what well before actually I want to dive into that let's mm -hmm. even just go into like what's the work that you're doing now like how did you so, so you transitioned you, yeah. you felt like the the LSD helped you really capture this healing and mm -hmm. like unburden yourself of the blame and beliefs that weren't serving you yeah right? and and this was like one step I like to tell people that you know taking any sort of medicine whatever it is whether it's mm -hmm. a pharmaceutical or whether it's something natural like psilocybin or cannabis um, it's never going to be like, oh, I did this and then everything's perfect. Like, it's yeah. never like that. It's no, always no. just one step in a journey to healing. And I feel like my journey, you know, for whatever reasons, because of the way that my life has been and because of my perspectives on it has been a lot about how do I heal? How do I heal? You know, one thing after the other, just like trying to figure out like how to come into a state of really deep happiness mm -hmm. and well-being. And um, 
yeah, the work that I'm doing is a mixture of my work with psychedelics and realizing how helpful they've been in my life and also work with somatic experiencing, body work and finding healing through the the body. And I know that like you as well know how grounding and how like much it can enhance your life to be really in touch with the body and really in touch with what you're eating and really in touch with movement practices and yeah. things like that. So this is kind of the center point. What I'm doing now is like the center point of all of these things that I have known to help me in my healing journey and all the things that I love. And it's basically body work, somatic experiencing. What Can you describe somatic experiencing? Cause I even, I don't yeah, exactly yeah. understand that term. Um, basically it's like, it's in my experience, it's a way to, work with the emotions using the physical body. Okay. So when I was working with DMT, I was facilitating with DMT um, for about two years under a shamanista that was teaching me energy work practices and also how to hold space for medicine. Mm. And one of the, the takeaways from that period of time was this belief that the voice of God in the body or the voice of spirit in the body is emotional sensation and the movement of that sensation. So like mm. when we're fighting with somebody and we just like can't like get our point across, we get this lump in our throat or when we're super worried about something, we feel it in our stomachs and mm. our stomach just drops. And um, or maybe, you know, feeling like the rush of fear coming on suddenly. And same with feeling joy, like really feeling joy. You feel it in your heart space and it, sometimes your heart literally feels warm. So how deeply can we tune in to these sensations and can we learn to speak that language intentionally? Uh. So can we learn to like, okay, I feel this thing and I want to move it through my body so it's not getting stuck. And you know, trauma in the body, like the more that I've been studying into the somatic experiencing, and I plan to go to Peter Levine's Institute. It's one of the best somatic experiencing schools in the world and it happens to be based out of Boulder. Um, but their teaching is basically that trauma happens in the body when we can't com complete the fight or flight response. Oh, uh, okay. So we, we freeze. Mm -hmm. And that's when the trauma actually gets stuck. And you if you think about our bodies like this channel, like this open, channel for emotions, thoughts, feelings to flow through. Mm -hmm. Trauma happens when we, something gets kinked and it's stuck. Okay, yeah. And these physical sensations of the emotions happen when there's a kink and they kind of get stuck. So how do we learn to move that? And we can use our voice and we can use movement, our bodies, we can use like playing pretend and storytelling and we move emotions through all sorts of different ways. Through music is a huge way. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my shtiff on somatic experiencing. It's <laughs> oh, kind of I mean, that. that's really cool. I mean, it, it's hard to because a lot of this stuff, like I was very very, and it's still like it's hard for me to even grasp sometimes. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like feel that, like, and I'm starting to tune into it, and I go, okay, okay I know that there's thing there's there's something here, there's something to this. Like, I can feel that the you know, like for for example, I felt a sense of like I was guarding, you know, over a heartbreak at one point in my mm -hmm. life, and I had to like undo that like it was a yeah. physical change in my body like mm -hmm. stop protecting your heart you know your heart it's space funny how like, your posture is even changing while you say this like you're like i was protecting oh, yeah. my heart and your hands like oh yeah over no your i heart remember and your shoulders because i was like you know i, I had terrible posture mm -hmm. like even just six or <clears throat> several years ago mm -hmm. i just like and as I've kind of done the work, I've like realized like, oh, there is, it, it, it's just, it sounds like crazy to, to people like me though, when you are growing up with like lots of different other messages coming in yeah. and you're like, what are you talking about? Emotional pain, like in your body, like holding on to like, what do you, yeah. you just like super like, nah, what are you talking about? Especially mm -hmm. men. I don't know if it's maybe a man thing or not, but it's just like how, like, and that's why I think it's really good to start delivering some of this out there because it's, it's just it's kind of part of the shift that you're talking about this in mm -hmm. your song I think it's just like okay well there's there's all these different messages and they didn't not seem to be working for so many of us mm -hmm. and now we're kind of tuning into these new ideas and mm -hmm. new approaches to medicine and yeah. new approaches to healing you know and it's just fascinating because it's just it's still like very hard for, I know, I know that like, there's going to be people out there that might be like, what are they talking about? So I'm like, how can we, um, <clears throat> other than like our own experiences, is there, is there some, is, is something that you have to go through? Is it something? Cause like, I that's that, almost like oh, the only way I feel like I was able to be like, Oh, I understand it. Yeah. I think that, I mean, you can learn anecdotally through other people's stories, but mm -hmm. like it is really potent when you experience it for yourself. Like, you know, I already had a pretty big awareness of like how much my emotions affected my body. You know, if you're mm -hmm. super depressed, it's like hard to get out of bed or like, 
um, if you're anxious, you you feel this kind of tightness in your throat or your heart is beating a little bit harder, you know, when the anxiety mm-hmm. comes on. But like when, when something happens, like what had happened to me during that period of time where my skin was literally breaking out in sores and rashes and the doctors were just like, nothing's wrong with you, go away. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, I know this is because I'm so mentally distressed right now. Yeah. And th- you're right. Our like our, you know, Western medicine system doesn't account for these parts of our spirit and soul and emotional bodies you know, interacting with our physical body. And it's, yeah, yeah, health is going to change a lot in the next couple (laughs) of years. Yeah. It's, it's just wild stuff, right? Because it's, it's such a, it's a, such a pioneer like space right now, a frontier space right now where there's, it's like, you're, you're a pioneer is what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, you're out there, you're doing this work and like, you're kind of blazing trails that we're all going to be walking. Yeah. You know, and it's the psychedelic Renaissance right now it's happening. Like it's (laughs) for real. Yeah. And what does that mean? What do you, what do you see for the, for, I don't know. I mean, I guess. So what I see right now is there's, because of this decriminalized, uh, mm-hmm. Denver movement and it actually passing, which like way to go to everybody that voted. Awesome I mean, job. Like, thank you. We're the nexus of, um, uh, uh, we're a node of special energy. I don't know what's going on in Denver, but yeah, Denver and Boulder, <laughs> we got some really cool stuff going on here. Um, but what I'm seeing is that there's, you know, we didn't have anybody to guide us through our early psychedelic experiences mm-hmm. or teach us how useful they can be mm-hmm. for helping us understand our world differently or understand our bodies differently or understand each other differently. And now we're probably going to have people popping up like myself who can be a little bit of a guide and show people like this is what you can do with them. So to give a little bit of like background is yeah. what I'm doing right now is psychedelic massage sessions. So the psychedelic could be breath work if the person doesn't actually want to take psilocybin, but most of my clients are choosing psilocybin. I don't actually administer or provide any sort of psychedelic to anybody. So Mm -hmm. that's how I'm kind of getting around it just being decriminalized but not legalized. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I want the person to be using a substance that they feel really comfortable with. And for most people, that's psilocybin. They have a, most people have a, uh, in my experience, a better relationship and a longer relationship with psilocybin than they do something like LSD, Mm -hmm. which I think actually might be a better medicine for stuff like this sometimes because it's a little bit more cognitive and a, psilocybin tends to be a little bit more emotional Mm. the experience but to help move through emotions in the body sometimes that's great for people to approach it from a really feeling standpoint you know it just yeah definitely can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes but that's kind of what i'm there for so we do uh in the program that i'm just starting we do a week of preparation so we do some different things with their diet and their exercise routines and some daily gratitude practices some things that literally just shift the energy of the body really subtly and communicate Mm. to the body on a subconscious level that something is going to be different sometimes I'll even fast like with my clients because when your body's in kind of a depleted place sometimes you're a little bit more vulnerable and open to energy movement um so the session itself, we go into about four to seven hours of body work, and usually the person is under some sort of psychedelic, usually psilocybin. Um, and before we even start that, like the journey itself, I'll go over some different somatic practices with them. So some ways to move energy. Uh, for example, one of my favorite ones is to move blocked or stuck energy where somebody's like, I, I'm not maybe quite sure what this is, or like, I feel this, but I don't know how to like move it. Um, they'll take a big breath in. And on the out breath, they'll be laying down. On the out breath, they'll curl into the fetal position at the bottom of the out breath and they'll tense everything in their body, their face, their toes, like just tense as much as they can. And then when they have to breathe in, expanding the body out really big. So stretching out the arms and stretching out the legs. And doing that a couple times creates this kind of energetic pulse in the body that knocks stuff loose. And it's amazing because a person mm. will be like, oh, I know this is sadness is here, but I feel stuck. And they'll do this and then they'll start crying because um, oh, wow. it just moves the energy so efficiently. So a bunch of different practices like that that I've learned over the years um, in working with energy that just can help the person have an outlet. Um, sounding is another really important one. So if a person is feeling like you know, say they're feeling frustrated or something that's happened with me and my friend in Costa Rica. She was really frustrated. She's like, I don't know if this is just because I'm on my period or because this person did this and I'm really like <laughs> irritated and I, you know, and we're just talking about it and talking about it and she's, it's not moving or getting out of her system. She's still just like holding it. And I was like, why don't you try this and just start making sounds that you can link to that feeling. Like, what does that feeling sound like? Mm. And we, for like five minutes in the car, we were both just making these sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> Anything to like tune anything. into, like when, when one like 
finally hits the fork, it's just like, yeah. it just releases. Yeah. And it just completely goes out of the body. It's amazing how effective it is. And I've, I've done this with a bunch of people that are like, whoa, mm. like I had no idea. And that's when you're sober. So when yeah. you're in such an open place mentally is when you're on psychedelics, it just moves things so fast. Wow. And can I ask, like, uh, I know you probably have like a patient like relationship where you can't divulge much information, mm-hmm. but what are some of the experiences people are having like post therapy with you or post session with you or like so, how are their lives changing? And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, So we just started the beta testing for this particular program this month. So Mm -hmm. I've only put two people through the actual sessions right now. And we have three or four more people doing them this month. Um, And then we'll actually, I'll actually launch it next month. But I've been doing psychedelic massage for as long as I've been doing psychedelics and massage. So (laughs) I've been able to see over the years some really incredible healing, mostly physical stuff with people that, you know, because I just started working on them when we were in a journey space or I was at a festival and somebody's like, Oh my God, can you like touch this? You know? (laughs) Um, and so I've, yeah, the healings have been amazing. And I've had people contact me like months afterwards and be like, I don't know what you did, but this pain hasn't been there since you touched it. And they had been living with it for years, you know, beforehand. So some really beautiful healing. And the last session I did, uh, with the psychedelic massage this month was just so deeply profound in terms of getting an awareness of like, you know, she knew she had this pain. She knew it started around the time her husband died. She knew it flared up whenever she was angry or sad. Mm. And it was like this black hole in her chest of just like, it would just hurt so often and no matter what she did for it. And so in the session, really coming to an understanding of like what emotionally was contributing to this and the clarity that we got around that was amazing. Like the thought patterns, the, the, Um, patterns in her psyche of wanting to run away from the things that scared her, what it was that was scaring her, what it was that we could do to help her feel worthy of love. Mm -hmm. Like all of these questions were asked and answered in that space. And now she has so much to work with afterwards. Cause again, it's just a step. Mm -hmm. It's not going to really fix anything. You know, hopefully we can make some serious progress with the physical part or the mental and emotional part. It can be kind of scary probably too. Right. Once you finally move the energy, then you're like, Oh, (laughs) Whoa. I have all this work to do. I got a lot of work to do. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've definitely felt that where I've been like, oh, I finally moved through something and I'm like, okay, all right. And next now level. the beginning. Yeah. And now <laughs> it's the beginning of things. Yeah. But that's really, you know, a gift. Like I keep saying, it, it is what I keep saying. It's like, all right, well, thank God you are here now mm-hmm. instead of still there. Yeah. Well, you know, holding on to that. Yeah. It's ego death. You know, ego death is horrible I I mean sometimes when you resist it it can be really awful oh yeah and then like you don't want to go through a new beginning again a lot of us and then when we actually do just accept that path and like go into that new beginning we realize how beautiful beginnings can be Mm. and it's yeah like the sessions are intense like you know going into these sessions with people some really deep deep fears and emotions come up and it's just a testament to the bravery of the people that are going in and using psychedelics in this way. Cause it's not like we're trying to open back up these traumas, Mm -hmm. but we are trying to go into the body to what does that feel like to feel this way? And we try to avoid the feelings and sensations of our body so much, you know, we're taught from a really young age that like anger is not appropriate. And if we show anger, it's the only appropriate thing. Sometimes the the other message you get, yeah. Yeah. Depending on how your family works. Yeah, it's true. Which is like, equally destructive <laughs> obviously yeah yeah <laughs> to not learn to work with our emotions in it like i just don't feel like we're taught to yeah. work with our emotions in a healthy way you know our society really just doesn't know no and so we're teaching ourselves yeah and each other <laughs> yeah no that's so wild and it's like this is like this is the new frontier like you're saying it's a psychedelic um renaissance or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it like you know, it's bigger than psychedelics, maybe. I mean, there's, it's I mean, so there's much lots of bigger different than psychedelics. Thing. That's <laughs> it. Like, psychedelics are a symptom mm-hmm. of a cultural shift that's happening. And yes, it's happening here in Boulder and Denver. This is like pretty ahead of the times as far as like spirituality goes, I think. Mm-hmm. A lot of people come and move here for clarity, is like the stories that I kept getting when I moved here. People mm-hmm. would come here during like a hard period of their life looking for answers. Mm-hmm. And in Boulder specifically, I think because maybe it was like there's a, you know, a Buddhist school here in like Naropa and like some spiritual centers that kind of like grounded that vibe into this place. But it's, 
it's a spiritual revolution. It's a global ego death, which we have to be waking up because we are now facing global warming. We're now able to communicate with all the different parts uh, of the globe. Yeah. Like as a society, a global community, we're going through a waking up process. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, I was talking about this a little bit last episode even, like mm. not so eloquently. But like, what is, can you describe like ego death to people? Because even I, again, like I'm, I'm here to get educated, you know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what do you, how do you see that? And what do you, so you know, what do you attribute that experience to being about like mm-hmm. f- f- you know is there some general principles to it and like hmm. so i think what i could best personify it as is like say you have a sickness like a bacterial overgrowth in your body mm-hmm. in order for you to come back to wellness that part of your body you're like oh this is me this is my body you know but that part of your body has to die off in mm-hmm. some way it literally has to go through a death yeah and so these old mindsets and we really like to make a map of how the world works in our heads like we really like to think we have it all figured yeah. out because the uncertainty is really unsafe mm-hmm. for us and yeah when we are faced with something that's just like you have to change in order to change. You have to let those old parts of you that identify with this, like this is me. Like I, I am Christian, you know, like I I see a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people that are kind of like coming out of really, really strict religious ideal, uh, you know, mindsets and Mm -hmm. ideals. And they're, they just identified like, this is me. It was who they were. It wasn't just like something they practiced. It was like their entire persona. Yeah, they're like, I'm, that's what I am. Yeah. And, Person who believes this. And so to go out of the church community or maybe widen their view of spirituality or to you know separate themselves from that, the part of them that said, this is me, has to die. Mm-hmm. Like literally has to die. And that is so painful because we, oh, yeah. we feel like we're dying. It literally feels life or death in our bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, but to learn to like let that go, ego death, I really do feel like it gets easier. Like once you go through it, enough you're mm-hmm. just like oh it's okay that i feel like i'm dying that's okay <laughs> i can just like lean into it and yeah. i know it'll be okay on the other side yeah yeah cool. so as a global community we're, we're going to have to go through this ego death of don't resist yeah don't don't resist it that's what uh, i tell me. people that before the sessions like <laughs> do not resist i've resisted the yeah. ego death it just delays the inevitable and it just doesn't feel good for the, all the time that you spend resisting mm-hmm. you know but yeah it sucks <laughs> because yeah I, I, I you know from first hand experience like I'm I was not comfortable with ego death you know I was not mm-hmm. cool with the like I was saying losing of control and like mm-hmm. my map my map of whatever I was building you know okay it wasn't working but I still like it was painful to let it go mm-hmm. um, and at some point that map was working at some, some point, point that it was. map was working yeah, it was real powerful. well for you, you, you know? know? Yeah, exactly. That's why you want to, you're like, no, it's a good map. Yeah. But, it uh, went so well. But it can be better, mm-hmm. you know? A new one can be better. Yeah. And know? it has and to change. Like, yeah. you know, our, our landscape is constantly changing, the landscape of our life. That's, yeah. Well, I think what you touched on was so important is like, we don't like face uncertainty. And it's, I mean, this is kind of a, a classic um problem that we're, we, we're, we're always confronted with is like trying to make, maintain some amount of security and stability in our lives, but also challenge ourselves to actually deal with the uncertainty that is inevitable. Mm-hmm. And it's better to get out in front of it and like start to develop that relationship with the uncertainty and the, and the death and being okay with it. Um, yeah. Because then you can really enjoy life more, I think, Yeah. than when you're like, Constantly oh, I'm gonna guarding build a perfect yourself. sandcastle. No, just like <laughs> oh fuck, and then it's just like now you have to start again. But yeah, I don't know. It's just it's silly to to really hold on to that. Mm-hmm. Like everything's always changing and shifting all the time, mm-hmm. and the more that you just like allow oh, and yourself faster and faster than ever now. Yeah, and I think part of like our resistance sits in our inability to <clears> sit <throat> in the fear, like our inability to really be with our emotions in our body. Mm. Cause literally like I see people and being an energy worker and a body worker for nine years, I see people just leave their bodies sometimes like their, their actual presence isn't really embodied in the body. Mm-hmm. And so I do things like balancing practices with people that really, it, you can't really balance unless your awareness is inside the body. You just can't, it, you'll fall over, you know? And so, well, that's why people do? love parkour I think so much so much yeah. because it's like you're just in your body you can't not be to do some mm-hmm. of the things you're doing you're like oh thank god i'm here again mm-hmm. i'm in my you know we're in reality in the presence like you're engaged with the 
the world around you. Mm -hmm. And you're doing something in the physical body as well. Mm -hmm. So not only are you in the body, but you're focused and it creates yeah. a safe environment in the body of an empowered environment mm -hmm. of like, I can do this. What else can I do? And it creates a game out of actually being in the body. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people, they have, they hold a lot of trauma, a lot of fear, a lot of physical pain. Mm -hmm. It's not fun to no. be in the body, you know? <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Yeah, no. And I think that's what's so interesting is I think my parkour practice led me into these things mm -hmm. and led me into like a more of a sense of spirituality because I was engaged through the practice in like in that without even really knowing it, mm -hmm. you know, following my, my highest um, excitement or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I was just like doing what felt good in my movement. And then it dropped me, it drew me into like, all right, what else feels like? What else, what, what, what are my other callings or what are my other things I need to be doing? Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know because you don't know because it's <laughs> mysterious. But it's just like that that it, it blows my mind sometimes, like where it kind of took me and like where now I'm in kind of a different domain. And but I'm very, very more engaged now with some of these ideas mm -hmm. and excited about like, oh, like there's so much, you know, work to do that I can do in this area. Yeah. now. I love that idea of just like, oops, I was meditating. Like it's, it's like, we didn't even know that that's what yeah. we were doing. Yeah, yeah. And then we stumble into like, actually, I kind of like yoga. Actually, it feels good. I'm going to do it all the time. And then you start to realize like, oh my God, this is what it's about is the mental mm -hmm. practice of, of being one with like what is going on right in that moment. And mm -hmm. you can't be jumping from railing to railing and not be like really involved in the moment, you know? No. <laughs> like you have to be there. Yeah. And that presence is really just what meditation is and what it's about. <laughs> And it's, it's amazing Preach. how like, you know, I think a lot of ego death can come from a lot of pain. Like people are put into these painful situations where they have to change. They mm -hmm. have to let part of themselves die if they're going to continue to be okay. Mm -hmm. And they choose not to. Sometimes they choose to numb it out with alcohol or drugs or um, uh, unhealthy habits. Yeah. But sometimes they do wake up because of that pain. But I think that hopefully like as we progress as a species and as a society and as a community that can support each other, maybe people will start to go through their like waking up awareness of their own selves process by ways that feel good like going into the body and actually taking up you know meditation by accident like I met a lot of people that were doing that with flow arts and like poi and hula hoop and spinning staff and like the things that you see people doing fire dancing and stuff like that I know a lot of people that accidentally came across some mindfulness practices within these fun activities they were doing mm -hmm. And we all are in this process of continually waking up to our own bullshit in our heads and our <laughs> own stories. And yeah. And there's so much out to, to explore. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you're still like doing parkour that often, but it's surely sometimes, sometimes, I mean, yeah. I, like, I'm, like, but the, like you said, like, it's just so cool that these things can even introduce us to each other. Mm -hmm. We both at one time shared, you know, some training sessions mm -hmm. and, and a community and a and community. And then like, yeah. And we're just still sharing it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've started to explore like different types of movement and stuff now to just see how what what's it going to do to my brain? Like what's it, how's it going to be to be engaged in this kind of discipline versus mm -hmm. you know the ones I've been doing already and and how and now how does my discipline of parkour or practice of it change and evolve with you know my own evolution? Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Fascinating. <laughs> Anyhow, um what a fun rabbit trail that was. That was a fun rabbit trail. Where did we, where was the hole that we started in the, well, in that psychedelics, I guess, and yeah. ego death and, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really do believe the ego death is one of the healthiest things that you can do as a person because you're, it's just so, it's a, you know, continual progression of finding your way to happiness mm. and finding your way to wholeness mm. and being able to not resist the emotions that are coming through. Can I just feel this? and not mm -hmm. judge it and not resist it and not like, you know, need to hold on to it or whatever it is, but can I just let this flow through my body like I'm an open channel? And the more we do that, I think the more that we have the power to pick and choose, like, what do we wanna pick up right now? Because we're not like, oh, this emotion is me. We're just letting it come through and we're understanding that all of these emotions and all of these sensations are around us and we kind of can just like stay present in this in this this moment right now. Mm. And yeah, it's, uh 
It's beautiful. And psychedelics, again, they're just a symptom of this shift that's already happening, this waking up. Yeah. And it's going to speed up the process a lot because <laughs> it did for so many of us. Yeah, you know? no, it's super, I mean, it's super cool. Like, I think it's it's no surprise in, in a way that Denver is one of these places that was like first to legalize marijuana and then now first to legalize um, psilocybin mushrooms or mm-hmm. decriminalize, but that's on the way. Yeah. You know, I guess to, to legalization. Yeah. I and, actually have and a then theory that lie, that initial, you know, whatever that dissonance that was like, all right, the government, the parents, whatever mm-hmm. that was telling us like, these things are not okay. Yeah. They're so dangerous. And they're so dangerous. You know? And they like, like anything can be dangerous. You know, you can drown if you drink too much water. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, it's just, by removing this, like, you know, we mm-hmm. actually start talking about it. We have the right conversation about it. It, it. it doesn't become this taboo thing that people are doing to rebel. I don't know. It mm-hmm. just is so much better for everyone to move forward, you know? Let's like, give each like, other that's resources. That's the ego death that you're talking about for the whole of culture, you know? Yeah. It's just like this resistance, this fear of of the unknown of like what could change if we, you know, try this, yeah. this drug that makes us think, ugh. So we reject it yeah. instead of just being like, how can we use this safely? Exactly. Like, you know, like my friend, well, who I it's mentioned. Like, it's, sorry to, to cut oh, you yeah. off, but just to make the parkour analogy for anyone, um, because for I know this is a, there's a lot of parkour <laughs> listeners probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just like the same thing when people say like, oh, I wouldn't, you know, I don't try to sell people on parkour, but also when people say things like, oh, I couldn't do that. Like, it's not for me. You know, it's just it's like so sad when they say that. It's just like, okay, like, well, yes, movement you could. isn't for you. What are you talking about? Like yeah. being in your body is not for you. I don't under. I mean, I know you don't get it because you, but because you think it's the X Games or whatever. You think it's like I have to learn double twisting, double flip to be a parkour athlete. But yeah, um, but it's it's silly. People you know? are it's just like, like everything is is scalable down to the beginning level. Yeah, it's so true. People are always like, "Oh, you do parkour? Like you used mm-hmm. to like, you know, you're certified in level one parkour? Like that's amazing. You must be able to like do all this stuff." I'm like, "No, I can't." And I never really wanted to do a lot of the things that yeah. I thought was kind of dangerous. You know, like I, I really stayed within my comfort zone in mm-hmm. the parkour community, and that was great for me. Like I really enjoyed it. That was what I wanted to do. So yeah, it's really sad when people are just like, "I can't do that." Yeah, I'm like, "Let me show you." crawl okay this is how you crawl that's parkour like, hey, walk done. over there okay you just did some yeah did a little bit you've been doing it your entire life yeah literally it's the it's the natural movement la méthode naturelle i don't know how to have a french accent natural. yeah i don't either um well yeah we should uh you know it's 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 everything's like that it's the other thing it's not even like that parkour is unique that way it's like skiing Mm-hmm. any movement thing you can you can you can be the professional that's extreme that's applied like an insane amount of hours to this one thing and dedicated their life to it in a way that you probably aren't going to be as interested as they were in it mm-hmm. or you can be someone who's a little more casual or you can become certified and like learn get a little deeper than maybe the the person who takes one class and is like that's eh, not for me but you'll never know if you don't even try it right mm-hmm. and you got to have at least a tiny ego death to just to try it, mm-hmm. just to try something. And I think trying new things is like, that's one of the good things about mm-hmm. that is just, all right, put yourself there see what happens. When you're experiencing new physical practices, do you, have you ever experimented with using small, small amounts of psilocybin or some kind of psychedelic while you're doing movement practices, trying to learn um, something new? I've done like some sessions, like, like after smoking and, and like being high and, at first, like not being very, like, I mean, be more fearful, mm. you know, like more, like, I don't know what I can do. I can't do anything maybe. Or like, <laughs> I couldn't like see distances. I was like, I don't understand like how far away that is. Can I jump that far? I like, wouldn't know. Yeah, I have to yeah. like jump to even know. And then, you know, the more I used it with it, the more I was able to understand like how it can affect my training and, and utilize it again in a in a good way mm-hmm. and I know that it's like really big for a lot of people um, not so much though I guess to answer that was a long winded answer <laughs> not so much uh, and maybe you know partially that's my own you know still maybe there's some there's some things I'm holding on to I'm like well if I can't do like my big shit then why <laughs> would I even like do yeah, it you know yeah. and like that's like I know that's like a thing that I might have uh, you know, I would, I would hold on to the certain energy or I would just, I don't need to hold on to it, but I'd be like, I don't need to do 
psilocybin because I'm not going to be as good, yeah, which is like yeah. not the the healthiest way to think about it. You yeah. know, you can like be well, like, well, is a see bit what it like. Well, parkour is yeah because then, it's dangerous in some ways. Like at least yeah. because you didn't the go there, but I doing. did go there. Yeah, like, I yeah. was like, I like to do some more intense things. Mm-hmm. Um, but. So I'm maybe also, that's like, a good idea. I think I shouldn't safe say use that because actually you just reminded important. me. Here's the thing: is like I actually just don't use psilocybin mushrooms that often. Yeah. And or even in small doses, like I haven't really been. I've been trying to like actually get a lot of space from certain substances to really real. To, to for me right now, the journey's been more like, all right, what's my sobriety kind of feel like more? Yeah. You know, because I I spent a lot of time, like from 13, I was like drunk every weekend till like 25 Mm. or something like you know like it was like not a good well it was it was a journey but like that 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 abuse of substance i would say like the overuse of it Mm -hmm. i like okay i I distanced myself from alcohol and i've like i've spent some times in my life where i was like definitely using marijuana too much and Mm -hmm. i've like okay now i get some distance from that and now i'm like really just being very careful and 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 um intentional with every engagement I have with any substance because I realized how much value there is to actually finding that moment and like following it to its, to its end. But, um, because I know that I'd had this issue in the past where I would be like, I just dive in and just be like, Oh yeah, let's try everything. Mm -hmm. That actually works really well the first time. And a lot of my first experiences with all these things were really, really, really good and beneficial, even like all the way up to like, you know, a handful or dozens of them. Mm -hmm. But then I can see now the pattern of myself, right? You know, it was like, okay, you actually have to make sure that also you're not being cavalier about it Mm -hmm. and you respect the medicines for what they are. Yeah. And so I'm just like being careful and making sure that I respect all this stuff. But I do remember a very, very fun. uh, There's no way when I'm not, well, when my first time doing psilocybin, I was snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Anytime I've done psilocybin, I've been hiking or jumping around or doing, doing parkour. something physical and like it's very enjoyable now that you actually yeah. like make me remember it i'm like you know what yes yeah <laughs> i just want to like put a little side note in here that i'm not advocating like go and and no, yeah, you know yeah. if you're it's your first psilocybin journey like do it carefully like yeah. you know just like you experiment with anything mm-hmm. you're not going to take some like pharmaceutical that you've never taken before and then go driving you know you're mm-hmm. going to be like cautious with it and i really trust our culture now like i trust people because mm. people are kind of fr- freaking out about this in denver like some oh, people are yeah. just some like people are, losing <gasps> like, their minds people are right gonna now. be driving and, and like, you're like no like they're adults <laughs> we're saying you know oh, we're not saying it's legal but yeah. we're saying like we're not going to continue to bust people for this thing that's not causing a problem well, and- and that, that's not even yeah it's like okay when when somebody maybe does get in an accident and they're on mushrooms that's not evidence that this is the bad way to go even mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like okay we already have this okay thing alcohol and like that is probably the worst thing to be doing on when you're driving yeah it's and so there's, dangerous it's so evident and like all the deaths that happen you know every year yeah. and all that and it's um, just like that we're okay with so like okay let's mm-hmm. like calm down you know what i'm saying yeah i'm looking forward there's to seeing if there's a correlation for the use of alcohol and psilocybin if that correlates with people maybe getting violent um that's something david I mean, and i were y- talking about the other day mm. um and yeah i really think that they're going to be able to find a lot of useful information like that so people now will have a guide like to see what can I do to make this experience safer? How can I do this well? Like, you know, they're not gonna have to go through the trials and tribulations that most of us went through when we were younger and yeah. freaking accidentally took a psychedelic when you're in the middle of some like city and <laughs> don't know where you're going. You know, like these these experiences that you hear horror stories from people's first psychedelic experiences. And now we're gonna be able to teach people how to do them well. And that's part of what I'm excited about. Like my work is literally showing people like these tools that they can take with them into future psychedelic experiences that in and even just into their daily life with how to move energy and how to allow feelings to come through and the kind of what's at the roots of those feelings and the insights and also like i've heard about people now starting branding businesses that they take psychedelics with their client and then do branding and marketing for them wow. like create strategies for that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. the idea is that you can't solve the same problem that this that your mind created unless you get into a different mindset unless mm-hmm. you become of a different mind yeah and um apparently yeah a lot of different scientific discoveries have been 
discovered oh, yeah. because the person was on some sort of mind altering substance. Yeah. Um, and it's so exciting. Like we're, yeah. we're such trailblazers right now. We're <laughs> going to be teaching the world how to do this well. Yeah. No, that's so cool. And, and, um, yeah, I know it is fascinating. Like I've had so much good perspective, uh, especially now that I've reintroduced like this much more intentional practice to any, including alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not, I'm not against alcohol. Like I know that it can be a more, I know it can be a more abrasive, violent tendency leaning substance. Mm-hmm. So can be extra careful with that guy, but it's yeah, still alcohol's... just, it's still medicine in the right dosage. Anything in the right dosage yeah. can be medicine as far as I can tell, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And alcohol is great for bonding and mm-hmm. like, helping to like relax the nervous system like it can mm-hmm. be really useful oh yeah and i think it's the most dangerous drug that i know of yeah um, which is so savage that it's the one that we like have like, had legalized the longest yeah criminalized the longest i know <laughs> i mean they and tried to take like, that away too yeah they tried saw how that worked out <laughs> yeah it just doesn't work it doesn't work yeah. right so like i mean just let's stop take the masks off let's like Let's learn about it. Why we don't have to be resources. afraid. We're not, like you said, like I trust people. I trust that we yeah. can handle this. Mm-hmm. We're mature enough now as, you know, whatever. As a culture. As a culture, a species mm-hmm. of people that are going to be able to interact and engage with this. Mm-hmm. And I think in this a healthy is going to grow way. us up faster. Honestly. You know, in yeah, a lot of ways. Then, then, yeah, then you get into like the, you know, the theories about like, oh, it's it's actually like the planet even like calling to us it's like no we're gonna feed them some mushrooms mm-hmm. we're gonna make them like wake up with us a little bit better Yay. um it's so exciting which, uh, yeah even yeah. just as like a mythos you know even like that's, yeah even that's if, great you know, it's like I'm it's down. just like it's fun to think about right yeah. Don't be one f- of the things i was curious about is if there was something in literally like the culture shift the vibration change that because we legalized marijuana if maybe that set the ground for us to decriminalize mushrooms, maybe that was part of the vibrational shift, you know, quote unquote, sorry to sound like such a bolder, right? But <laughs> like maybe that was part of the shift. Yeah, sure. Sure. It's all part of it, right? Yeah. It's like just, the mushroom or the cannabis primed us primed, in order yeah. to it's the gateway drug. awaken. Uh-oh. Now we're playing into the, the, oh, the no. negative narrative. It's a gateway no, but... towards a global awakening. <laughs> no. It's just, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just absurd that, you know, it's, I mean, there's places in Portugal is like probably the furthest example of this right now, right? Of decriminalization. I didn't know about that. I think Portugal's had a lot of decriminalized substances, um, substances for a long time now. Yeah. And it shows like actually general decrease. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's in, I think what was um, important with that is also that they offer treatment as yeah. part of it, you know, like things like what you're doing and, mm-hmm. and education <clears throat> and like it goes along with it. It's not just like all right just send it out there yeah because you know that's really like what we've done with alcohol in some ways and like it's just like Mm -hmm. it's not brought the intention that we need it to have maybe Mm -hmm. even i really like to see like and i thought it was sweden i was reading an article about but maybe it was portugal but yeah they decriminalized heroin in this certain city oh yeah that's one of what i would consider yeah oh and not even decriminalized but like they off i think it's so government sponsored like, like treatment like Come get your heroin here where it's safe. Well, they don't provide the heroin, but they, they provide do. clean in needles. In some places. Really? Yeah, 100%. That's interesting. I, I, I mean, I don't know where. I, I know this is a thing, though. It's like they, they yeah. in some, I think it's like in some Scandinavian parts or they're so progressive in Scandinavia. But like, yeah, like they're, um, they'll, they'll treat you. They'll offer you. They'll mm-hmm. give you as much as you want. You have to do it at the clinic. Mm-hmm. You can't do your heroin like at home. But yeah. you can do whatever amount you want there. Mm-hmm. And, and they have medical care there. And there's a treatment care, center that they can you, opt they'll, into. They'll treat you and then yeah. send you on your way. And they help people figure out their own way off of it. And like, yeah. and I think what that huge part of what the huge thing is, is it removes that shame, that judgment of like society. That keeps it in the shadows. That keeps it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's, again, one of the substances that I would consider the most dangerous, along with pharmaceuticals, mm. and because that as well is like so culturally acceptable as it's like, it's no wonder we don't trust these aka drugs you know like it's no wonder we don't trust them because we see like these pharmaceuticals or like the you know the layman that doesn't have any experience with psychedelics and literally has just heard like rumors that somebody thought they were a glass of orange juice after taking a tab (laughs) of acid and that's their life now you know like it's it's no wonder that they have trouble trusting that these substances can be used really safely and can be really helpful because all the drugs that they're using like there's all these side effects they're making people's kidneys fail they're like people are getting so addicted to them like you know substances can be really scary (laughs) 
But when you're coming from a culture and a society like in Denver and Boulder, where people are really fitness focused, they're really holistic, they're living a lifestyle that is conducive to like true health. And then, you know, we're I think we're in a good place to be able to handle like landing that, you Mm -hmm. know, landing the psychedelic movement here and kind of rooting it in, showing the world what it can look like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's show them what it can look like. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's looking pretty good from where I'm sitting. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking good over here, too. Yeah. Um, I uh, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to cover, but I think that's, that's yeah. like... Um, what else? I just want to give a quick shout out to my roommate, Gareth, who he was um, part of Magic, who did the social media marketing for the Decriminalized Denver campaign. Mm. And I just think it's so beautiful that this as well as like a symptom of the culture shift is um, there's these businesses popping up that are more like they have a bigger heart behind them and they're more mm. intentional than the businesses that have come before that were just about making money, That's just a about huge providing shift a product. In this culture. Huge. So magic is all about like how can we get these really conscious brands that we think are going to bring in a new paradigm and a new reality and help spread their message and tell their story. They're part of Marianne Williamson's they were managing her social media campaign for a while and that was and that was amazing. You know, they reached their goal and they got this many signatures and like got her on the ballot. This is huge. You know, a spiritual teacher that's also a woman that's running for president, like that's amazing. I don't that's a great know story. Much about her. Can you tell me who, who is um, this? Marion Williams? Marion Williamson. Williamson. So I would suggest looking it up on Facebook because I won't okay. do her justice by okay. telling you <laughs> by telling Marianne you about Williamson. her campaign. Twenty twenty. Yeah, because I've only seen just a couple of videos, but just the fact that like this is a possibility that a woman that the first like spiritual teacher you know that we have like as a candidate for president is making mm. moves to actually get there, and you know there are people that are in these companies that are really trying to help the world move forward. And I'm just so proud of them. Like, I'm so proud of us. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, yeah, this is so fun to just like see it happening and mm-hmm. just like understand that like, Oh, we're, we're, we're taking ourselves into a better world because I don't know, the, I don't know why you feel like that way at some certain times in your life, but you feel like, Oh, this is the way it is. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. It's just like, we're just getting started still Mm -hmm. and it's so exciting to like understand like oh my god um so much can change and so much has already and so Mm -hmm. much will you know i uh i was just thinking about this like this morning even i was just thinking about wow like in my lifetime just how much there has been a shift and how much now you know I mean, I was just thought about like the the troll the whole Trump thing was like just a, like kind of a hilarious catalyst because it looks it looked like it was almost like the it the, looks like the we swords. were stepping back. It would look like you know if if like that was the eruption in some ways for some of us, maybe mm-hmm. not everyone, but but a lot for of people, a lot of people it was just kind of like okay, whoa, we need an ego death now, yeah, because this is like we can't have this. Like this is like <laughs> this is we gotta not change something. something is not right here, you yeah, and in, in what we're doing. Um, and I think that's like what was so like a lot of people were up in arms about it mm-hmm. and I'm not like one to get super political about it. But like if one one of the things you can think about is just like, oh, that's again, like that's just the, when you take the bad with the good, you can just sit with it. You realize, OK, this is what is it is. Then you can move through it and into something new. And mm-hmm. I think that's what like some of these people are doing and like why yeah. um, you're seeing these different kinds of politicians come out of the woodwork now is because it's like in response in some ways to Mm -hmm. just like us being like, okay, well we're open to some new ideas again. (laughs) Like we need to be, we need to be of a different mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, But, and I think there's a couple different theories on how to change the world. And it's like, we need to fix our systems and that's going to change the world. And, and I'm of the mindset that like six systems can't live in a world with truly healthy people. Mm. And so that's my mission. You know, that's the angle that I'm taking. Yeah, and that's yeah, what I'm doing both. to change the world. It's like, I'm going to go individually and teach people what I think is the most important for them becoming their best and highest selves. And that's working with the emotions and working with the body. And just to give myself a little plug here, hey. if anybody that's listening is interested in one of these sessions, I would love, I would just love to lead you through it. Um, you could probably contact you to I'll get put, my I'll email put all address. Your yeah, yeah. In the description, so they can just link mm-hmm. to it immediately. And what this but. is really good for is working through physical ailments that have their roots in emotional issues. So I have like a client that has been having panic attacks since a sexual assault. And, you know, that's what we're working to relieve Mm -hmm. or even just people that know that they just need a next step in a healing process of some kind. And they've already been working at it and already been like going there on their own and they just need something else to provide maybe some 
next level of breakthrough. Um, I'm so excited to be launching this next month. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Uh, congratulations on all mm. the things. Yeah, thank you. Doing, and thank you for the work you're doing. And uh, yeah. thanks for sharing everything with us. Right back at you. Thanks for helping to share the message. Because hey. this is so big. And I'm so excited <laughs> to see where it goes. Yeah, me too. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, all right. And thank you guys all for listening. Yeah, thank you guys so much. It's been awesome to be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> much love to the crew, the listeners, everybody that's part of it. We'll see you on the next one. All right, gang. You know where to find it. It's in that description, yo. And uh, there's nothing more to say. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thanks again for listening. Thank you, Kyra, for being a part of this and busting your podcast cherry with us here on Height Trop and uh, telling everyone about the amazing things that are happening in this part of the world, part of the nation. You know what I'm saying? And thank you guys again. Uh, please check out the description. Please. Uh, dive a little deeper if you're interested and if you want to support the podcast also links available there so appreciate you guys i'll talk to you soon peace the world's got no space for us but our timing is perfect the new world is worth it we're waking up who the hell is